great. All right, no building outside. Let's see, what else can I do? Okay, I've got this boat here, and I've got this motor on. Oh, well, let's go inside, I'll explain. That boat was originally going to have a 24 volt electrical system, like everything else I've built, because when you have it all the same, you can use the same parts for everything. However, I was donated a 48 volt motor, so I designed the electrical system around that and made it a 48 volt system. Six months later, that motor died. It does not work at all anymore. This is why I don't like brushless motors. Ugh. Brushed motors, you just change the brushes. Brushless motors, if the electronics go out, oh. Anyway, so I found a backup motor, which is also a 48 volt motor. However, it's a way overpowered motor. It's like 20 horsepower. So if I run that from the batteries, it's gonna have way too much power. It's gonna drain the batteries really fast. It's gonna rip the transom off the boat. You know, if it held together, the boat would go super duper fast. Just not for very long, which is useless to me. So uh, I was thinking, what if I run that 48 volt motor off 24 volts? And I'm gonna check the math on that right now. Oh, and the way I've been running this motor is I'm running it just off the solar panels. So the solar panels have a limited amount of current they can output, so it won't over, it won't, you know, crank the motor up to full speed. Uh, it just limits whatever the solar panels can output which is like way way underpowered for the motor and I think I suspect I might actually be able to make the motor go faster just on the solar panels by reducing the voltage which would increase the, the current because I think I'm just wasting tons of voltage let's, let's check all right it's a 48 volt motor at 80 amps I check the specs if I cut the voltage in half on the motor, it's only going to take 40 amps, which would be 1,000 watts, which would be roughly, you know, a quarter of what the maximum is, which is fine. Um, now, the way these two things are my two solar panel options. Right now, I've got to set it up to 48 volts at 28 amps, and I'm wasting tons of voltage because I don't have, I don't even have enough amperage, stop it, to, uh, to make up what what it needs for 24 volts or what it could use at 24 volts now if i switch to 24 volts i get 56 amps and 40 of that can definitely go in so 40 is higher than 28 i'm going to get more power and in reality the solar panels are a little more than 24 volts or like 28 so it's going to be closer to this although even if this is a little bit over that just means when a little cloud gets in the way i won't slow down Oh, yeah, I should definitely switch it to 24. I'm going to get much better power out of this motor. Plus, I'll be able to run it off batteries without tearing the boat apart. Of course, I can get a speed controller too, but worry about that after. I might be able to run it just directly off 24 volts. Anyway, I don't have to worry about that right now. Um, I want to switch the solar panels and the batteries and everything to 24 volts. I'm not going to be able to do the solar panels in the rain. However, if I can get all the batteries disconnected, I can bring them in here, draw out somewhere on the floor the size of the area they can go in, then get it all rewired and blah, 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 cut the batteries where they're, yeah. All right. These are in 36 volt packs. And then I have three 12s because I cut one of those in three to make 48 volt sections. But now since I want 24, I can pair up those, take this, cut a 12 off there, then I'll have a 24, cut those two, so I have a 24, a 24, and then two 12s for another 24. Okay. Cutting them is a little bit messy. Okay. Now these solar panels, while well, I've got some sun out, that's two solar panels connected in series. Electricity is coming in that red and, you know, going through the solar panel and going into the other solar panel and then coming out that white or vice versa. I don't know which direction it's going. Uh, so I need to have, instead of this wire just connecting them, I need to have four wires coming out of this going in the direction of those white and red ones. So I need to disconnect all that nonsense. Yeah. 
So my wires will have to come in here and then once they get under here, then I can put some blocking diodes so the electricity doesn't accidentally go back into the solar panels. I did have my blocking diodes over here, five of them. I'm gonna need five more since the solar panels aren't connected in pairs anymore. They're all gonna be individual. So each, each solar panel needs its own individual diode now. And the diodes just protect the solar panel from electricity going the wrong way, like into it and burning it out. Okay, so you don't forget, Jamie, connect the negative from the solar panel to this end up here. And then this end will go to wherever batteries or motor and stuff. Okay, that's the last connection on the solar panels. Oh, and I've got a sunny day. <sighs> Presuming I connected everything, I should be able to run this motor pretty good directly out the sun. The batteries aren't in yet. Because, oh, batteries. This is one of the problems with modern technology. Like, it always works great when it's working, but then there's always problems ah, so much maintenance anyway a bunch of the cells are dead so i have to go through and eh, I'll deal with that later uh, right now it should work directly off the sun and i've got a lot of sun so let's go test it out. the funny thing is uh, i never had any battery problems with lead acid batteries they don't have as much oh i gotta put my drill back in they don't have as much energy however i mean they're so low maintenance and supposedly lithiums last longer but I don't know man when you include all the all the problems they can have I don't know that they actually last longer you know nice thing about having no batteries is it's like 100 pounds less weight in the boat, at least, so I can carry more cargo. And uh, I don't actually use the batteries that often anyway. When I could use them, I mean, I haven't been able to since my original motor broke. All right, let's just shut up and test this out. All right, I have a switch to connect each pair of solar panels, so I need to test each one individually, one at a time, to make sure that each one is connected right. And then uh, I can connect them all on and see how fast I can go.
cut here. The first two have a significant speed up. And then on the third one and the fourth one, I think I'm getting to the max, the max current that can go through the motor at that voltage. So I think this is pretty much the maximum speed I can get. But the nice thing is, it's basically the same on three of the solar panels. So that means if I have a quarter cloud cover, I can still go maximum speed, which is excellent. Yeah, this is a good, this is like good cruising speed. Let's go across the Atlantic now. Dude, I wonder how long that would take. Just <laughs> put the cap on that motor so it doesn't get wet. I snapped my runner off a few weeks ago. So that's why it's uh, reattached with rivets. I do need to check my switches up here because now there's twice as much current going through them. I need to make sure they're not overheating. Oh, I feel fine. And a tiny bit warm, maybe? Yeah, it's hard to even tell. I did make them out of uh, copper tubing, which is pretty thick. Definitely heavier duty than I need them to be. And they work great. I love, see, I love like old technology like this. That's really robust. Like I could drop that whole switch thing in the ocean, pull it out and it would work just fine. You know, clean it off. Same thing with like lead acid batteries. If I had lead acid batteries, I could drop them in the ocean, fish them back out, you know, wipe them off and they'll still work. But like uh, the lithium phosphate, man, one tiny scratch and the things like explode. Well, they don't explode. Although I hear sometimes they do. I don't know. Whatever. They overheat, catch on fire. You can't get them wet. I mean, you got to keep your diapers on them all the time and baby them. Yeah. This, the, the technology we're building today is just not built for men. I guess that's why I like the old stuff. The old stuff could, you know, could go through a bit of, a bit of adventure and come out of it with some scratches, but still totally work. I'm not giving up on my batteries. Uh, I'll probably still put them in. But uh, kind of leaning more toward getting lead acid batteries next time I need them. Although with this boat, the, uh, the pedals work so well that I only need the motor when I'm going really long distances. Although even on the longest distances I ever go, I have pedaled the whole way there and back, even in bad weather. So it's not like I can't do it. I can definitely do it. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I might just go with this for a while. No batteries up here, just leave it empty. Save the weight. It's pretty cloudy now, and I haven't noticed any slowdown in the motor. That is great. It, it is really nice having a little bit extra solar panel up there. Because obviously, you know, in full sun, I'm wasting a bit of energy, but in real life conditions, things are not perfect all the time. Yeah, I like this. I like it. And now I need to go to town ASAP because I have some, some styrofoam to pick up. Because people have been collecting it for me and apparently there's a pretty big load. I better go with an empty boat and pick up some food and a few other things. I could go today, except it's a little bit late to leave. Pretty happy with that. Wasn't anything spectacular going on. 
wasn't super fast or anything, but uh, a good long distance speed. It felt very reliable. <laughs> we'll see when I go to town. Uh, right now I'm not using the middle row of solar panels, just the side ones. Just because I'll deal with stuff later. This is all temporary stuff. Like, I wasn't even planning to operate on this boat at all until after I get my uh, my big project done.